to episode 356 of Good Luck High Five. That's right. You're listening to a podcast that's for you. If you play Magic the Gathering, whether you're playing some arena, you're playing some FNM, you're just playing at home, we are here for you. I'm one of your hosts, Maria. I'm another one of your hosts, Megan. And if you happen to hear the sound of jackhammering, don't worry. That's just the sound of people working on the podcast to make it better for you. <laughs> And by the podcast, Maria means the roof of the adjoining building, but same difference. Yeah, yeah. We're putting in a lot of work. Yeah, we really are. That's some good good old-fashioned construction work on the airwaves. You've got to make that waveform sound real nice, oh, you know? Yeah. You know what I mean? you got to patch it up every so yep. often. And for that, you need a backhoe. You know, uh, speaking of how things uh, sound, I <laughs> have a terrible cold this yes, week. Yes, So do. I'm sorry, everybody, for my voice sounding like it's coming out of my nose and of nowhere else we also are gonna have a slightly shorter episode today yeah because maria is just really not feeling I good i'm not feeling well but you know what i am here for you everybody yes i'm, I'm trooping it out uh speaking of you. being here for you you could be here for maria <laughs> in this, her time of need I by need becoming you. a patron over at patreon.com slash glhf magic um any you know any patrons joining this week their money will go directly to tissues for maria's nose <laughs> I need the really soft kind with yes. lotion in it. Oh, we also Please. need to post a photo of you and your Reese's pumpkins. Oh, yeah. Because they did happen. They did happen. We have photographic evidence of Maria with a package of Reese's pumpkins. Did we take a picture? I thought we did. Because I we ate better have. all of them. Yeah, you <laughs> did. They were also the slightly bigger ones. They weren't the minis. No, they were very they were they big. Were legit pumpkins. They were big pumpkins. I looked up for, you know, no reason the other day. Uh, Reese's pumpkins are the best Reese's.com. Nobody has bought the domain name yet so did you purchase <laughs> it <laughs> no why did that story not end with so i and bought so it so i bought it well i mean i suppose i could it would be a very good joke uh, for 15 dollars yeah 15 dollars that joke is 100 percent worth 15 dollars wow that by the way the work on our podcast <laughs> is getting ever louder by the minute so i it's, hope you're already honestly, hearing results it's kind of comical because i think if you looked up like a foley file for yeah. construction work <laughs> nearby <laughs> this was. is it <laughs> this is like exactly the sound of like listen <laughs> Bob, we need to make sure that it sounds like there's construction just <laughs> just off screen. Oh, well, I've got the perfect sound file for you. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> Recorded live outside Marie and Megan's office. <laughs> anyway. Woo, fun. So, yeah, head on over to Patreon and help support the show. It'll make you feel great as we uh, start to enter the second biggest gift giving holiday of the year. Yes. Halloween, of course, After Halloween being, being number one. Uh, thank you as well to cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. Remember, you can go there and say good luck have sticker good luck have token and they'll give you a free good luck high five sticker token in your order yeah which is super exciting also as we as we enter the holiday the second biggest gift giving yes, season second uh, just a reminder to shop with places that are part of your community um whether that means it's part of your magic community like card kingdom is yeah um or it just means part of your local community if you're going out and getting cool local artist made stuff for oh, people yeah, these holidays definitely i think card kingdom is a really amazing example of when you spend your money with a place that's part of your community, they put money back into the community. We are living proof of that. Exactly. Like, it's so... They help enrich the places around you and the things that you listen to and the things that you can participate in. And that's true both of stuff like Card Kingdom yeah. and stuff like what is local to you, whether that's bookstores or cool art markets. So make sure you're hitting that stuff up this holiday season. Yeah, very good message. On today's show, we're going to talk about uh, not only Reese's Pumpkins, uh, <laughs> call us Reese's, uh, but uh, we're also going to talk about new stand because I want us to get a sponsorship that's not Reese's, but only Reese's pumpkins. We're like, we just want to be clear. We don't want to be sponsored by the entirety of your brand because no. we think that normal Reese's are bad. We don't like them. But we if we can only get sponsored by holiday specific Reese's. Yeah, so Reese's trees. Great. Reese's trees are good. Reese's trees, fine. Great. I'm not picky. Uh, what is a shape that Reese's could make that is like their other holiday shapes, but is hmm. year round? Oh, this is a very good question. Like a cat. Like a, just a big circle. Like a dog. <laughs> but the circles are bad. No, but I'm saying if they didn't have the crimped edge, that yeah. is garbage, then it would be good. Yeah, you're that right. That is what I have a problem with. I think we have to say it's a shape so that they know that it's, it's a not Reese's the circle. It's a Reese's sunshine. There you go. 
A little star. <laughs> it's the Re- Reese's Moons. Reese's it's Moons. It's a circle. It's a circle. See, Great. we solved it for you, okay, Reese's. Okay, perfect. Anyways, our, our you were saying, we're talking about standard. Oh, yeah. So there's some big bands announced today in standard. We're going to get into that, and we're going to make some hot predictions about what cards might be great now in standard, now that some big baddies in green are gone. That's right. We'll also talk a little bit about the magic story, because, yeah. wow, that book happened. There was some big controversy online this week because of the War of the Spark Forsaken novel yeah and we're gonna dive into that and uh kind of some of the fallout from that too because <laughs> not right. only was it bad it was also quite funny <laughs> <laughs> i thought you were gonna say not only was it bad it was also no. quite quite bad, bad. <laughs> <laughs> well that too <laughs> also <laughs> All right, everybody, in case you didn't hear the news, big changes to Standard with the ban yeah. and restricted announcement out today. Dang. So in Standard, which we're talking about specifically, uh, Oko, gone. Yep. Once Upon a Time, gone. gone. Veil of Summer, gone. gone. Wow. It's really something. These were three huge staples of the Standard format. Yes. And especially Oko, Thief of Crowns, mm-hmm. just format defining, format warping. Yes. And then also continue like, to nerf these greed decks power with yeah. Once Upon a Time and yeah. Veil of Summer. Yes. Bye-bye. Um, I am obviously especially happy to see Veil of Summer gone. Why is that? Because it just, how are you supposed to be able to play blue or black? Yeah, it invalidated a lot of yeah. more controlling strategies. Murderous Rider. Awesome card. Yeah. Guess what makes it bad? Veil of Summer. Summer. Yeah. So I think this could open up some new doorways for you, Megan, to play some more control decks like you like. Yeah, I really. I'm Kill some creatures. Excited. Do some things. I really hope so. Um, Once Upon a Time um, got the ban as well, which yeah. um, I think enabled, plus the London Mulligan, a lot of opening hands that were able to do, quote, what they wanted to do, do their thing extremely yeah. easily yes well more easily than maybe i think magic wants it to be yeah i think now it's kind of interesting looking at the band now because part of me is like i wonder what would have happened if once upon a time had stayed in but then you think of all of the cards it's like oh my opponent can almost always cast a goose on one right with the once upon a time or it's like x it's like hydroid they're always going to find a hydroid crassus when they yeah. really need one they're always going to find their nissa which is still going to be in the format you're going seeing forward. so many cards yes you're almost guaranteed Five. to hit something right i've said this before but every time Five. someone cast once upon a time and i saw them look at five cards i passed out yeah i mean it's because i just so could much. not believe the, the number was five. And for me, I didn't play any Oko decks because I'm not a bad person. Yes, but what I same. did play <laughs> was a lot of adventure decks. And this also hits those pretty hard, not having Once Upon a Time, because the whole deal of these adventure decks was having Edgewall Innkeeper on turn yeah. one to enable you to just keep drawing cards and keep that engine running. And if you had Once Upon a Time in your hand where you're like, well, I'll find my Innkeeper. Or you didn't have to keep, like, you could keep a one lander. That yeah. was completely fine because you're definitely going to find a land in the top yeah. five. Um, um, so I think because of this ban, Golgari Adventure, Celestia Adventure, and Gruel Adventure all get much worse yeah. post this ban. Um, I don't know if everybody agrees with me on that, but that is my personal opinion that these decks just are kind of mediocre if they don't have Edgewall on turn one. Yeah, that's, I think, there very legit. That's my hot um, take. So we're going to look at a couple of cards now that get yeah. better. All right. So for you... Absorb... <laughs> Absorbed. Obviously up there. <laughs> no, I mean, we got to have some time with this, and now it gets to come back. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm, really, I'm <laughs> sure you are. Oh, gain three life, counterspell, and gain three life. What a what a good day. What more do you want, control players? Exactly. Sphinx is revelation? Yes, but anyways. <laughs> but I mean, you know, what are you going to do? Um, Yeah, just let me know if you see something. Okay, so a card that I uh, want to talk about was Assassin's Trophy. Yeah. Which I think is going to go up because now we are going to be able to play decks like uh, Fires of Invention. Um, Ooh, I like, love Fires you of know, Invention. Like, you know, Witches Oven Sacrifice decks. Yeah. Uh, like um, cards like the Great Henge, right? Yeah. And these are cards that we weren't. We could play with before, but we're much bigger liability when Oko was around to turn them into Elks. So now that we can play with them again, we're going to need some way to deal with them again. Yeah. Uh, And Assassin's Trophy deals with anything. So I think this card is going to come back into circulation. I agree. That's, I think that that's just an A plus, um, 
prophecy. Yeah. I really want to see some mono black with Ayara. Ayara. We about this a little bit. She's our preview card. Yes. And we love her. And I agree. I think a mono black deck would be super, super sweet. Yes. And I think especially now that Veil of Summer being gone has opened up like Murderous Rider. Murderous Rider. Great for sure. card. Going to be better now that there isn't a one mana draw card counter to it. Absolutely. Um. So yeah, I look forward to people maybe trying to... F- Brew something fun with Ayara. I would really like to see that. Maybe we can see Aurelia being great again. Ooh, you really love Aurelia. I love Aurelia. I loved playing Boros Angels back in the yeah. day. And um, while some of my angel friends aren't with me anymore, hashtag RIP Lyra, I, <laughs> I do think Aurelia is a really sweet card. So yeah. maybe we could have some fun with her yet. For sure. Um, Bedevil makes me think of like all of the Grixis flavor of control decks. Yeah, sure. Like the Nicol Bolas um, flip Flip Dragon. Flip a bolus. Flip <laughs> flip a bolus. Flip a bolus. Is flip a bolus? I don't think flip a bolus is still illegal. <laughs> No. Bolus. <laughs> no, I can't stop calling him that. Uh. <laughs> um, but I, but still, like, Nicol Bolus, Dragon God. Yeah. Um, you could certainly play Bolus but Devil, Grixis Control. Yeah, but Devil being a, a very big one. Yeah. Um... Yeah, looking forward to some stuff like that, maybe. I think that Bone Crusher Giant will now get um, potentially more of Time to Shine. Yeah. In Standard, it's a very, very, very powerful card, and it really only saw a home in Gruel Adventures, which I said is going to get worse, but that yeah. doesn't mean that's the only shell you can but put this, this card in. And also, this is a card that I think makes the point that like that deck is still going to be good. Yeah. Um, it didn't... Like, it still has some very great cards, Bone Crusher being an excellent yeah. example. And... Sorry, but this reminded me, looking at this card's color, <laughs> mono red. Oh, no. Yeah, I think we might have opened the floodgates for some more mono red now, right? Oh, okay. I mean, yeah. Now that you don't have so many food tokens You're running around. You're not gaining a lot of life from food yeah. anymore. I don't know. Oko's yeah. not like stealing some of your hit points that you would normally go to the face. Yeah. It's just something I, I has occurred to me. Yeah, I think that's, that's a very reasonable. Get at me, Cavalcade of Calamity. <laughs> Maria wants to see that Cavalcade deck. I actually do like the Cavalcade deck, even though I'm kind, I hated the mono red deck when it was around in standard. Not, but I kind of like the Cavalcade version. It's silly. Yeah. Um, I obviously, I love the Fires of Invention Cavaliers deck. I think it gets way better now. I'm excited to see that. Yeah, for um, sure. Running around. The only argument that I would have against that is that this deck, like, ha- can have a rough time against control. Okay. Um, and flash sometimes, uh, because, like, unless you have your three mana to fairy, um, you don't really have any protection against them just countering your important stuff and letting whatever else happen. Yeah, it can just get under you because his counters are cheaper. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that being said, you know, I do really like this deck and I am excited to try playing it some in this new format. Do you like the Jeskai version or the red blue version? Ooh, great question. I think I prefer Jeskai. Um, just because I love uh Deafen and Clarion. Oh yeah, Deafen and Clarion. Yeah. That'll take care of your mono red worries. Yep. I wonder if we'll see some of those elemental decks coming up again. Oh my gosh. Remember when those were all that was played? Yeah. Remember when they were just the hotness? That seems like it was forever ago, but it, it really does. couldn't have been that long ago. But what made me think of it was Chandra Acolyte of Flame. Yeah. Because that, that's the uh-huh. little three mana f- uh, Chandra that makes some elementals that can attack. Um, yeah, that card could potentially... Like, I wonder if it, or just in mono red, yeah. like in the Cavalcade of Calamities deck. It's great in the Cavalcade deck, I imagine. Yeah. I would like to see Oops All Chandras be yeah. a deck <laughs> with all of the Chandras in it. Yeah, I know some people played that uh, earlier in Standard. Yeah. It's kind of a silly deck, but uh, I love a good theme deck and Oops All Chandras is a strong theme for me. Yes. It's, it's right up there. Ooh. Hmm. Oh, Dance of the Bads. Oh, yeah. I think it's much better now. I really want to see a Dance of the Mans deck. So people have been playing it. Yes. But it hasn't been great. There was a there was one that did like good on day one of the Mythic Championship. Yeah. But then kind of fell off. That I saw cast Doom Foretold. 
Yeah. Speaking of, so Doom foretold, this is two white black for an enchantment. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a non-land, non-token permanent. If that player can't, they discard a card, they lose two life, you draw a card, you gain two life, you create a 2-2 white knight creature token with vigilance, then you sacrifice Doom foretold. Yeah. And so it's like, you just have all of these dumb, you're playing like dumb cheap artifacts. Yeah, so you don't have any creatures. Like Guild Globe or whatever. And you can sac, you're like, okay, I'll sacrifice Guild Globe because I don't care. I don't care. I want it in my graveyard anyway for Dance of the Mance later. Exactly. And then your opponent has to sacrifice all of their relevant stuff. Well, I saw it <laughs> happening and it was very cool. I played against this deck yesterday. Yeah. And uh, it was it was one of the best games of Magic I've actually played in a long, long time. Yeah. And I was able to use... Gosh, what deck was I playing against them? It must have been their Rakdos Knights deck because I flashed into Black Lad's Paragon, so I was able to get them because I didn't think I had any creatures for Doom yeah. Foretold or whatever. But uh, a very, very powerful deck. Once it gets to its late game, it is nigh unbeatable. Yeah, it's it was so cool to watch. Um, Seems like a deck you would like. Yeah, I I definitely see myself trying that out a little bit. Speaking of Rakdos Knights, now is yeah. Rakdos Knights time to shine? Maybe we'll, Maybe. we'll, we'll even go back to Bardu Knights. Yeah. I don't know. Um, not a knight, but Dreadhorde Butcher, a card that I think was starting yeah. to see a little bit more popularity before this hap- before this format happened to us. Yeah, <laughs> happened to us. It did I happen mean, it to us. It happened to us. It honestly did. Um, so stuff like that, that little black and a red for a 1-1 one, one haste whenever it deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, put a plus one plus one counter on it. When it dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Yeah, it's a great card, I yeah. think, in a Rakdos uh, Sacrifice yeah. deck that uses stuff like, uh, what's her name? The DJ, <laughs> Priest of Forgotten Gods. Yeah. Um, that forcing forcing you to sack creatures and add two black to the meta tool, meta pool, draw cards, etc. I think it's really, really powerful strategy. Yeah, exactly. So look forward to seeing potentially some stuff like that. Um, Embercleave, well, obviously. Embercleave, hello. It's just been poised yes. to be great. It's waiting in the wings. Yes. And now it's, it's now it's coming into season. Yeah. You know, it's being announced. What am I thinking of? It's like a debutante. Yeah, like a debutante. Like it's coming, coming out, out into, into society. Into society yeah. Wearing a beautiful ball gown dripping with blood. What? <laughs> <laughs> Which is if I was being announced what? as a debutante into society. Well, that's what you would want? It's what I would wear. That seems right for you. You know, I just want to make a statement. Yeah, I want the papers to be like, we were all terrified. <laughs> <laughs> we were all terrified. Look, we were all terrified. Yeah. Obviously, as I said, fires of invention. Oh, yeah. Just, it's, just great. It's getting its day in the sun, I think. Yeah. Um, Gadwick the Wizened. This was happening in mirror matches. <laughs> yeah. Um, out of the sideboard, which I really appreciated. Who knows if he'll be able to have another home. Gilded Goose survived um, the axe, by yes. the way. So the goose lives to the terrorize another day. The goose lives on. Do you know who hasn't gotten enough time? The goose stays loose. God Eternal Kefnet. <laughs> I want to see that, buddy. Kefnet. I obviously love God Eternal Kefnet. It's... Uh, I guess you could still play it. What do you mean you guess you can still play it? Of course you can still play it. It's in control decks. What are you putting it in? Like... I'm putting it in, in blue, white, or blue, black, or esper control. Okay. I love Put it. Put it in there. Kefnet. I love him. He he, my big bird. <laughs> he my big bird friend. He my big bird friend. I was gonna say I feel like I played against Kefnet a fair amount, but it was never like yeah a key card. Yeah, it was like a one. Yeah, you know. You know a happen. card that I think I thought was gonna make a splash standard. Yeah, was Harmonious Archon. <laughs> yes. And it never showed up anywhere. This is the four white white for a four five flyer. And when it ETBs, all creatures have power and toughness three three. <laughs> and it comes along with two one one AK three three humans. Yeah. I would like to see that as like a finisher. Yeah, as like a c- control deck finisher, I think. Yeah. Potentially. I wonder if we'll see the return of Hero of Precinct One decks. Oh my gosh. You remember all those Esper Hero decks? I sure do. I wonder. I wonder if perhaps they still have it in them. Ooh, what about Ilharg the Raise Boar? Oh, wow. Okay. Pig Il- time. Pig time. Pig time. Pig time. Pig time. It costs five. Yes. For okay. a 6-6 six, six trample. When it attacks, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. You return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. It's pretty intense. Um... And the classic, it has the god ability where if it would die, you can put it into your library instead. 
Because he's a pig god. He he is. He's a boar god. Excuse you. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. I can't believe you just called him a pig. You know, the other day, somebody texted me who was watching The Black Cauldron because it's now released on Disney Plus. Yes. Which is by far the worst Disney movie of all time. The only to receive a PG rating in for an animated uh, cartoon. And it's based off my favorite childhood book series, The Black Cauldron, by Lloyd Alexander. And that's why I'm so mad about it, because it sucks. And it doesn't have to, because the books are so good. But anyway, he was like, why is the pig in this story magical? And I was like, man, I don't know, man. It's just a magical pig. What do you want like, from me? It just is. It just is magical. And he was like, would not stop. Well, well, I need to know why this pig is magic. What? <laughs> Look, I don't know what to tell you anymore. Is this the it's same just a person magic pig. who reads Harry Potter and is like, tell me why Harry is magic? Well, we uh, that's explained. It is? Yeah. Because Harry's a wizard. Be- yeah, because of w- what happened before with, you know, the parents and the magic of love and he who shall not be named. No, but I'm just saying, why is, why why is, is Harry magic, a wizard? Why does magic exist? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like reading okay. Harry Potter and being like, <laughs> but why are wizards? <laughs> But why? So I have a question. Why is this pig a god? Well, because it is. Well, because it is. But anyways, can you imagine? Okay, you play this. And then like the next turn you attack with this, you get to put in something else tapped in attacking. And you have all of your money to Embercleave. All of your money. I mean, that's what I was. Embercleave. That's what I was thinking. I was like, put Embercleave on this pig. Yes. Get in. Yeah. I don't know if it's any. It's probably just straight up worse than putting it on a Roddy Registrar because the Roddy Registrar costs only three mana. Yeah. But it's not as fun. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I'm very excited for? What? Some players brought like a Teamer Reclamation deck. Yeah. To the Mythic Championship. It's not dead yet. And Iron Crag Pyromancer. It was like a draw to oh, team or reclamation. That's kind of cool. Because you could draw two on your turn and on their turn. So it, it played Improbable Alliance. It played Iron Crag Pyromancer. I love Improbable um, Alliance. Yeah. Chris Patello. I got to watch it. Classic Chris Patello deck. Cat Packed um, played it. Um, I think Autumn was also playing a version of it. Cool. And it was just like, I want to see draw two decks. I want to see yes. them have their time. Yes, I hope maybe the next set we get another card that cares about draw two. Yeah. Um, that could possibly go in this deck. That would be... I think that would be awesome. That would be great. Um, by the way, um, yeah. Corvold has been turning up in some Jund sacrifice Ooh, decks. I saw someone... I think I remember watching someone cast Corvold. I don't yeah. remember what I was watching. But it yeah. was... I was like, excuse me, who? What? This like brawl card that got yes. printed? Two black, red, green for a 4-4 dragon noble with flying. I thought you were going to say dragon nobody. <laughs> <laughs> for this freaking 4-4 four, four dragon nobody. nobody. Who does Corvold think he is? <laughs> Anyways, uh, flying. Whenever Corvold enters the battlefield or attacks, sacrifice another permanent. Another permanent. Whenever you sacrifice a permanent, put a plus one plus one counter on Corvold and draw a card. Sweet. Real, real hot. Sweet. Nice. Yeah, I like it. R- really good. Uh, we'll see. I imagine we'll see Legion's End again quite a bit now. Oh, Legion's End is back. Which is a nice answer to maybe Mono Red. Yeah. Um, and it is playable now that Veil of Summer is, is gone. I'm sure Liliana Dreadhorde General. I'm sure she's still have, a thing. We have not seen the last of her. Oh, no. No, I don't think so. She's just too good. Yeah. Lockmere Serpent. So Lockmere Look Serpent. My buddy. Never ended up in standard no, somehow. Not yet. Not yet. Because it was released at the same time as like Veil of Summer and these times when Blue Black wasn't a color pair yeah, that you could play. That's true. So I think that maybe we're going to see some Blue Black control with this as like their finisher. That would make you very happy. A big ol' snack. A big, unkillable snack. Yes. Get this snack. Get this snack. Well, we already see that Massacre Girl is popular. March of the Multitudes was popular mm-hmm. in the Green White Adventures. Mass manipulation. Yep, probably yeah. still going to be a thing. Especially now that you can't, like, you, like, pay eight man and they're, like, Veil of Summer. And you're, and you're like, like, great, cool. Oh, never mind. Never again. Just kidding. Never again. I, I quit magic for all time. I hate everything. <laughs> yeah. Everything is bad. Bye. Murderous Rider. Obviously, I think, a card that we're just going to see. Yeah, I think you might be able to put Murderous Rider now. on top of the most improved mm-hmm. because of this ban. Yes. Cards. Yeah. It's def. It might. Yeah. Could could be number one. Number one. I think, it, yeah, I think it's mm-hmm. number one. It's just so good. I would like to see some decks that y- make use of Mu Yang Ling. Yeah, Mu, Mu Yang Ling never got her chance to shine, really. Yeah. Um, and I, like, every once in a while, I would play against a deck that had her um, in it. But 
like it was never it was never a deck that was doing particularly great it felt like yeah agree so we shall see yeah there's omnath obviously like we said the, yeah, elementals, the deck. elementals deck could still maybe be a coming thing. back so maybe some prime speaker vanifar a lot of people, people were tried to make, it happen to make that happen maybe and it could be the moment could be um do you know what i was looking at the other day was ravager worm because like i wonder if those gruel decks like with like i wonder if there's a place for this ravager worm costs three four five six matter for that four five um hmm. four five riot when it enters the battlefield uh choose up to one it fights target creature you don't control or destroy target land with an activated ability that isn't a mana ability hmm. like who knows maybe it's certainly a great card very flexible yeah made for best of one play specifically but um powerful enough to see play in standard potentially who knows return of the wild speaker um, this is the four and a green oh, yeah. for an instant. Draw cards, choose one, draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control or non-human creatures you control. Get plus three, plus three until end of turn. All right. Nice little overrun there. Yeah. Or draw cards. You or know. draw cards. It's like, it's like a Rorschach test. What do you yeah. see when you look at this which, card? Which mode do you see what first? What do you see when you look at this card? I'm like, oh, sweet. Give your creatures overrun. And you're like, sweet. Draw cards. Oh, cool. Draw some cards. <laughs> Uh, I think great. Um, Sarkin is going to maybe get back out in a standard again. Yeah. He was kind of peeking his head in through the door beforehand. Mm -hmm. There are like some fires of inventions that are about planeswalkers, like the fires of invention walker decks, like a super friends. Um, yeah, that I've seen with Sarkin. That could be super fun. Yeah. Super friends. Super fun. Super friends. Super fun. Ah, oh, I wish Vamp I'm looking at these vampires again. I'm so sad they're gone. I loved I that know. deck so much in standard. Uh but yeah. These are some these are some cool cards. Oh, here's a your Mardu Knight. Oh, it's Sir, Sir Gwyn. Sir Gwyn? Yeah. Yeah. Uh five five it's just so expensive. Is, yeah, it's very cost expensive. Six mana. You know, I'm sure everyone's waiting for Teferi Time Raveler to really Oh yeah, finally. Get on in there. Finally Little T could have his moment. Oh yeah. But for real, the Great Henge though. Oh, the Great Henge, I think. Also, I think Welcome you back, mentioned baby. you mentioned Murderous Rider. Yeah. I would say this is competing for that top spot. Yeah, I think it certainly will be. Yeah, it's like Murderous Rider or Great Henge. Who's gonna? Who has more room to grow? Henge is a great card. Yes, that's uh, why they put great in the name. Seven green green for a legendary artifact. Spell costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Tap add. Green, green, you gain two life. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on it and draw a card. Wow. Like, this card is just absurd. It's so good. I forgot. Yeah, but, this card oof. is kind of nut bones and uh, super, super powerful in mono green strategies. Yeah. All right. Maria, I feel like you're fading a little bit. I'm sorry, everybody. That's okay. I'm just I've saying. I've tried to keep it together we've, for you. We've kind of hit, you know, we, we've hit a lot of the big the big ones. Yeah, I think so, too. The big cards that we hope to see coming up. Um, yeah. I am, Great Henge is one that I do really want to see. Yeah. I, I love drawing cards. So. I, we got to see a preview of it, right? People were brewing with this card yeah. when it first came out before. Everyone was like, oh, wait. I Oko should just, just like makes play it an Oko. Elk. <laughs> um, so I'll be happy to see that uh, coming back in standard again. Yeah. It's kind of like they just released a new set. That's how I feel. Yeah. Like they just released a new set into standard and here we finally get to play with Ooh, it. Exciting. Which is really, really cool. It is. It's kind of sad that it had to happen this way. But <laughs> now that it has happened this way, which is interesting too, if you want to read some of the thoughts behind like why they made these decisions and maybe potentially even more interestingly, how they're going to try and stop these decisions from happening again in the future. You can check out dailymtg.com because there's an article up there about lessons we've learned yeah. from the standard banning <laughs> and, you know, talking about how we really, really have to be careful about three mana planeswalkers moving forward. Yeah. Um, we have to be careful about the answers we print, like Veil of Summer, yeah. um, thinking that it was kind of more of an analogy for some older cards they'd printed in the past, but really it was just straight up much better than those cards. Yeah. And like, oh yeah, now we, we know what to keep our eye on moving Which, forward. Which, like, I love that they're experimenting with this space, right? Like, Oh, for sure. I would much rather always, have them experiment. Yeah. Like, sure, we had a, like a couple of bad months where Oko was just like in control of everything. Yeah. But it's like, well, what if they were never pushing that space? Like listening to them talk about when they were 
um, looking at Once Upon a Time, they're like, oh, what if there's something that's kind of like the ley lines? Yeah. But is an like is an instant or sorcery instead. Um, like, how can we play with that sort of space? And right. It's like, I'm glad that they're thinking about that. It is really cool stuff. I agree. Um, and if the price that we have to pay is that, like, sometimes some very busted cards come around and they have to be like, okay, we need to correct this. I would I'm, prefer I'm that. Honestly, yeah, I would way prefer that than over them just bored. playing it safe and being boring. Yeah, for sure. I don't play magic for, like, the same experience all the time. Yeah. I play it because it's constantly changing and evolving. Yeah, absolutely. So let's continue to have that happen. And yeah. I think play design getting smarter yeah. and smarter as they move forward. Before we move on, I yeah. just want to talk briefly about, um, speaking of something that hasn't changed, uh, the arena draft bots. Yeah. Just still, the, like, Secret Keeper is still a problem. Yeah, it is. Um, but here's my hot take. All right. Is that everyone it keeps drafting the Secret Keeper decks because they think that it's the best one on Arena. And right now, in secret, actually, the Secret <gasps> Keeper says that green, my, my take is green red is better. Like uh, non-humans? Yeah, green red non-humans. You can, like, I... All right. I, um... And it is still frustrating because you still play against, like, I played four Secret Keeper decks in a row the other day. No. But you know what? I also beat them all. And Sick. it is immensely satisfying. Oh, gosh. There's no better feeling than no beating a Secret Keeper. There's no better feeling than beating keeper a Secret player. Keeper. Um, so, one, like, if, like me, you're a glutton for punishment or you just love draft. And so, like, I get on Arena and I'm like, honestly, it's what I want to do. Yeah. Even though it's not totally. good right now. Um, honestly, my take is that you can find some ways to make it good. Um, you know, try some, try some red, green aggro. Just yeah. get out there. I think that's a great tip. I yeah. played it the other day. And I'm like, if I get past secret keepers, I'm just not going to take them. And I just did it. And I have not. Fine. I have yet to draft that deck. Wow. A true hero. Even though there have been times, <laughs> there was a time when I didn't draft that deck and I still ended up with like four secret keepers just in my pool because they were going they were just, so late. Like, well, all right. And so at the end, I was just like, well, it's like four cards in the pack, none of which I'm going to play. So I took a secret keeper. <laughs> so the next update for Arena BT Dubs is on the 21st. That's this Thursday. Yeah. So maybe there'll be a bot update in there. Who I know? don't know. There'll be a bunch of other updates, like a friends list Who will knows? be in there. And there's going to be uh, historic cards dropping yeah. into there and some historic tournaments or not tournaments, but best of three and ranked play coming on Thursday. Yeah. So if you're sick of draft that, that um, those are new modes for you to play. But I, I honestly think it's a great draft format. It's just the bots. I have a, tr- I have a problem. Yeah. With. All right. The end. The end. <laughs> Let's talk about the magic story for a hot minute. Oh, it so it the <laughs> book came out. Up. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> In summary, people Big were posting. It came out and people were posting some excerpts. Can from we it. pull up the expert expert? Ex- yeah. Okay. Expert in question. The expert. I'm going to put my computer on incognito mode because I don't want it to know that I wanted to look. at this. Wow, Megan, do you think your computer is judging you for what you search? I yeah. <laughs> Well, you, do you know what? Google I think is. that you're more incorrect if you think that it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Your computer's like, oh, she's looking for that magic story that sucks. Oh, yeah. boy. Okay, what did you want me to find? I want you to find the Nissa Chandra section. Oh, okay. From War of the Spark. Oh, in that case, I probably... So the name of the book is War of the Spark Forsaken, and it is the follow-up to the story, which was... Uh, Gosh, what was the name of it? The previous book that came out. It was another War of the Spark story. It was about how they beat Nicobolus, of course, in that great m- moment when um, Gideon sacrifices himself to save everybody. Um, and so this is kind of the follow-up, uh, starting from that moment and moving forward in the story. The problem... Excuse me. The problem was that <laughs> the book, uh, according to many people, was very poorly written and also just kind of like felt like the author was checking off plot points on a checklist to make sure that he hit them. And one of those things that he hit um, was treated very carelessly, which was a relationship that had been kind of building up between Chandra and Nyssa for a very long time um, and alluded to in the previous book um, when, when they uh, admitted that they loved each other. And now we come to this book and it's kind of cast aside into the wind like so much trash on a, on a windy day. Um, and we can read for, for you a portion 
of this book yes. so you can we're understand what we mean. We're also trying to um, get a copy of this book. Someone said that you can check it out from the library. Oh, okay. But I don't want my library to think that they should purchase more copies. Yeah. So I don't want to indicate to them that there's any demand for it. We'll figure it out so that we can do dramatic readings from okay. this. But anyways, here's this one. <laughs> go. All right. Do you want to go for Is it? this for real how it's written? Yes. This is how... This is... This is real? Oh, my that's God. A, I'm just checking that this is for sure what it was. Yes. This okay. is the original... This is the original okay. cap All right, from it. Here's the story. <clears throat> Chandra had never been into girls untrue by the way her crushes and she'd had her fair share were mostly the brawny and decidedly male types like gids that's right they call him gids but there had always been something about nissa ravane specifically something the two of them shared in that great chemical mix what does that what does that phrase even mean <laughs> i don't know it's the it's the most what un- does it even mean most unromantic thing i've ever heard in my entire life it sounds like they're in a lab <laughs> that great chemical anyway. mix uh arcing between them like one of ral zarek's lightning bolts that had oh, thrilled barf. her from the moment they first met. Why was there an unnecessary period in the middle of that sentence? Oh, yeah. From the moment they first met. That's a sentence fragment, isn't it? Ugh. Now everything's different. Why is that in italics? I, I don't know. It was over. Oh, what? Before it had ever had a chance to begin. Maybe, maybe they had missed their moment. A time when if Chandra had demonstrated more courage or more self-possession, she might have told this how she felt. She did, everybody. Okay. A time when if Nissa had acknowledged even the slightest hint of interest or self-knowledge. I felt like she... Yikes. Okay. Also, also. acknowledge and self-knowledge are so close. Uh, they might have found their way to each other. Okay. This uh, is so bad. So, there's besides this writing being just like a trash Just fire, so bad. Um, the point is that like a lot of people are like, come on, man. Like, why do you got to do this to us? This was a great, you know, example of a relationship and magic story that everybody was behind, that everybody was really excited for happening. Uh, we had seen it on the Art of Cards. We had talked about it in previous stories a number of times. And then to just gloss over Sh- Chandra's, you know, bisexuality like this, and be like she had always been in the guys decidedly male types like kids oh. is the most awful thing I can possibly imagine. It's just like so... So offensive. <laughs> so <laughs> I tweeted something out about this and it is easily my most liked tweet I've ever tweeted. Um, anyway, it's, I was yeah. upset. And like, so obviously this has been like discussed at length online, but so yeah. what we really wanted to touch on was just like, remember, like it used to be in house, the yeah. story writing mm-hmm. back when you could read it on the, the website. Like the one that comes to mind for me is always the Ixalan one. Because it was so good. Yeah. Like, for a while, the magic story was great. And we had story time with Vegas. Yes, and we had story time with me because I enjoyed reading them and wanted to recap what was happening. Yeah. Um, And wanted to spend my time reading them. Like, I, I really liked it. And, like, I don't understand why they... I don't understand why they shopped this out. I don't like, know. I don't know why they sent it out... out of house I get it. To me, when they like, were doing such a good job in house, why like, oh, would you do that? Oh, we could save money doing it this way. I don't. That is like the only thing that would make sense. But also, this guy, like, how could have hiring this guy to write a full book cost less than whatever they were doing before? I don't, I that don't doesn't know. make sense to me. Maybe they thought they'd make more of a book sales potentially, like t- enough to make up for it. Yeah, that's all I could guess. It's so bad, and it's it's more disappointing. Like, if, if it had always been bad, it would have been just like, this is another laughably terrible installment and in what has always been laughably bad. Yeah. But instead, it's like, oh, they had like gotten on this track where it was going great. And I think people... And then now it's going so poorly. <laughs> they didn't mind the Brandon Sanderson that introduced Davriel, that book. N- no, but that's because, like... Brandon Sanderson is like a good writer and a magic person. Yeah. I think that's one of the issues here. Like if you're a writer, sometimes it doesn't matter. Like this is very bad, but even yeah. if you're like pretty good and they're like, Hey, you have to talk about 50 characters. You've got this yes. many pages. And Here's you have the three plot months points. to write it. In three months. And, ready, you're like, set, okay. go. and you're like, uh, and you just have to bang it out. Right. Yeah. And I think that's probably what happened here. And somebody did not, not enough people checked this with their eyeballs from, from inside Wizards of the Coast and said, Oh Wow. This part, especially about Chandra and Nyssa, is super bad. This thing that a lot of fans had invested in, this representation that was so important to a lot of people that we're just going to 
delete it without even mentioning it, without ever it being realized. And it's they just, yeah. understand why that is, you know, a problem. Yeah. Like, you just never would have gotten... Like I said, I think back to the Ixalan one and, like, Vraska's development as a character. Yeah. You don't get that from people... From shopping it out to people and being yeah. like, hey, will you do this? I think there's something to be said for certainly having a through line for writers, for the story, to be invested in it over the time period of more than just here's your contract, right, yeah. about this. Um, I just wanted to highlight one of your very favorite... <laughs> can't handle it it's so good um okay so here's another passage <laughs> that was found by uh, amazonian she did she took the bullet for us here and read this book and found this gem uh, okay are you gonna read it or do you want no me to read you it? have to you, okay, are, you make love it, fake. it so Ma- much make it fake because i want to read the whole part <clears throat> Oh, this is the only part that we have oh, okay. that I have. All right. So <laughs> it's just two lines of dialogue. We'd like that, Chandra said. I girl, said a Johnny, grinning his Leonin grin. <laughs> 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 what what is I girl? What the hell? Like this. Let's I also just, girl. Do, let's also just talk, talk about the phrase grinning his Leonin grin. <laughs> I smiled, smiling my human smile. <laughs> uh, I just know that that one particularly tickled you, so I wanted oh, you to yes. have an opportunity I to can... read it to everyone. I like there, there is absolutely <laughs> no way to say that. Uh, I'm like sitting here thinking, like, oh, I'm trying to imagine somebody dresses a Johnny do this line. I girl, like it's just like kind of sexy, which is also bizarre considering what we just heard about Chandra uh, and that yeah. whole disaster over there and then he's like i girl (laughs) no no it doesn't work on any level oh boy i don't think johnny's the kind of character who goes around saying i girl like like, girl girl i girl i just (laughs) mostly i wanted to lament obviously like like we said people have discussed at length all, all of the many aspects of this that are terrible yeah um on twitter from from like the bi erasure of chandra and like nixing her and this is relationship without a second thought to yeah. the garbage writing style <laughs> i girl but i mostly wanted to lament like there was a time when it was good yeah and i miss that time um and i don't it's um it's so strange to me to think of them having actively made the changes that made it so much worse in literally like the last 12 months. <laughs> yeah. I think they probably are rethinking some of these decisions. Now. I really hope so. I really, really hope so. And not to mention the story used to be free, which is yes. what you're talking about there, which I, and you know what, at the end of the day, if, if you're like, Hey, what we need to make this feasible for us to keep making this is to make it a book that people pay for. Okay. Yeah. Even if you did it, like what you used to do on the website where you had different, authors every week but it's a compilation of essentially it's like an anthology or whatever yeah but it's the same in-house people but you needed to make it a book that people had to buy fine okay yeah, i don't buy peg if it's gonna be good exactly i really don't um but like especially if you're gonna make people pay it shouldn't be the garbage <laughs> one <laughs> it got worse and people had to spend money on it uh, what a day hi girl <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a moment to thank our other sponsor of the show, Ultra Pro. Ultra Pro. They make everything you need. I mean, honestly, what dice, do you need for magic? They make Dice it. trays, which actually, you know, I never stop and give dice trays the appreciation that they truly deserve. I love deserve. a good dice tray. Because we love games like Sagrada. Yeah. Like speaking of our life, even outside of magic. Yeah. Um, plenty of games like that where you got to roll a lot of dice. A lot of dice at Sagrada. You know, dice trays. Thank goodness someone thought of them. We're holding here some Ultra Pro metallic satin tower deck boxes. They're so pretty. Which are very pretty. Have a cool like metallic yeah. sheet on them. Uh, they could hold 100 cards. Uh, 100 double sleeved cards, which is more really than pretty. my hands can hold. Yeah, I can't shuffle so. that many cards, but this deck box can hold that many. So, you know, get their deck boxes. They're better than your hands. <laughs> Now that is an endorsement <laughs> I don't think you could argue with. Uh, but everything that you need for your magical life, uh, they've got a lot of magic art on all of their stuff. Um, you can find them anywhere fine magic products are sold, even over at Card Kingdom. 
Okay, that's our episode for this week, everybody. Thank you for sticking with me, uh, despite my horrible cold. Um, That's what happens when you travel for like four weeks straight. Yeah. Thank you to everyone who is already a sponsor of the show over on patreon.com slash glhfmagic, helping Maria get the tissues and the Reese's treats that she needs. So the things I need. To become well again. And thank you, by the way, to everybody who threw a donation our way for the Card Kingdom's Chalice Charity Tournament. Yes. We met our goal there, which was excellent. Yes. And for people who recently um, threw us some money for the huge improv theater fundraiser that we were part of. Yeah, that was awesome. It was really great. Thank you so much to those people. It really does mean everything to us to know that you not only support us in our magical life, but for us, like improv is a huge part of our lives. And knowing that you are like, oh yeah, that's important to them. I'll help them out is uh, like, you know, doubly important. And uh, we really thank you for being there for us at our theater. Yeah. Um, thank you once again to our amazing sponsors, Card Kingdom and Ultra Pro. And just once again, a plug for shopping in your community yeah. this holiday season. Because when you shop in your community, it enriches your community. And we are in your community. That's yeah, us. Are. So, like, supporting us, I think, supports your community, too. And hopefully we support you every week when we're here for you on the airwaves or coming out of your cat's mouth. Maria, you need to go take a nap. Oh, gosh. I need to take five naps. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Five naps. All right, buddies. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>